Hey everybody, this is Tasha with Prep For It, and today we have a special guest, Gardener Josh over here. Howdy, Mr. Howdy, everybody. <laughs> um, so I've been wanting to have Josh on for a while, and he agreed. And Miss Mouse, I wasn't even thinking when I invited Josh on, but Miss Mouse had a little procedure she had to have done, so she's out for this week, and we'll see about next week, but for, for this week, so... Josh agreed to still come up here, even though the wonderful Miss Mouse isn't going to be up here. So. <laughs> anyway, but I appreciate you. Come on. Hey, everybody. Well, I just got up. really big shoes to fill now that she's not here. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, you got to put on your sassy pants. The sassy bridges got to come on, mister. Don't tell me that, Tasha. You got to threaten putting a puffy <laughs> cap in somebody, you know, every few minutes or so, you know, just to keep it. Keep it going with the mouse vibe. <laughs> right. I'm not going to bust no cats. I'm just saying. I'm not going to bust no cats. Oh, whatever. You run all our fun. <laughs> okay. So we'll give her it, it a few minutes because notifications, you know how they are. So we can just chit chat for a minute. So we were talking about our garden uh, and you said pretty much your main garden is pretty much finished for the most part. For the yeah, season. just too much heat, and I just can't keep enough water on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's hey, how it is. Hey, Gil, Mouse hey, Toe, Suburban, Yossi. Yossi. What's up, guys? Yossi, Sandra. Let me see who else Thanks, Mouse. There. SOP, good to see you using my adapter. Thank you, SOP, for that recommendation. Hey, Mouse, watch hey. what happens when I move my head. <clears throat> Don't tread on me. <clears throat> That's right. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so I figured, you know, we could talk some about you and and like some of the garden tips and things, you know, and the homesteading tips that you have because you don't just take care of a garden and you don't just take care of animals. You take care of all of it. You like to do basically the whole homesteading thing. Hey, Kathleen. Well, that's what I'm, trying. I'm trying. I'm working towards self sustainability. You know, I'm not there by any stretch of the imagination, but the ultimate prep is to be able to do it yourself forever. Yeah. You know, it's not, yeah. it, it's a hand in hand. Homesteading and prepping is the exact, it, they're, they're peas and carrots. I mean, you, yeah. the goal is to prep everything that you create on your homestead and use that as your prep. Right. You know? I'm currently now I can hatch my own chickens, my own geese. I've got goats now. I'll be able to breed those. Um, you know, I've got over a hundred chickens, so I've got protein with the eggs and protein with that and, uh, rotating the chickens. I'm hatching chickens as I'm butchering chickens. So it's starting to come along. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I would like to get to. I don't know. I can't do chickens because I'm allergic to the feathers. Like, really allergic yeah, like i know that, that's, that, you know i got eggs for you though my brother-in-law up the road has eggs for me which is awesome but you know i want them for more meat birds um i want another option besides just the cattle that are out here because if there was a disease that went through the herd and it was a shtf or tiatwaki situation we would be done for hey hooga hooja i can't i don't know how do i pronounce that correctly Huga. Hooga. Hi, Farmer's Son. Good to see you. Hey, Farmer's Son. So, yeah, I would like another, an alternate meat source. Um, and some people have said rabbits, but then other people have said, like, it really gets way too hot here. I mean, because Western Oklahoma can get to be a 110 to 114 uh, degrees. Now, that's not very often, but we do reach 100 quite frequently in the summer. This has been an unusually cooler summer, but most of the time, well, we were at 100 today. Well, so. You, you got to think outside the box, Tasha, and we're, the United States is a country that doesn't look at all the meat sources as meat. Like, in Australia, guinea pigs are raised just like rabbits for meat. Guinea pigs will survive in the heat. You can raise them indoors, and <clears throat> they've got they got them to where you can get them up to one and two pounds. So, and you know how they, they can procreate. So uh, there's, oh, there is options out there. It's just not options that we think of. 
Yeah, I guess that's true. Um, and like for alternate protein sources, you could do legumes and things, but, um, you know, you might get a little sick of that too. I like having like an actual, um, thank you. Great man. I appreciate that. Yeah. If y'all could please pound that like button, I'd appreciate that. Thank you. Um, but yeah, I, I, uh, I would like to have an alternate meat source. And of course, next year, my garden's going to be bigger. Lord willing, my garden's going to be bigger and, and, uh, I'm going to make some changes on that. But, uh, tell us a little bit how you got into gardening. Well, <clears throat> I started out basically at four years old, um, on 180,000 acre ranch in Northern Idaho for the LDS, the Mormon church. My dad was the manager of it. So I've been in big ag for, I was in big ag for over 10 years with him and the scale at which we grew things is, is kind of hard to, to think about. I mean, I it's just a lot, that. a lot more than you think about. I mean, when you're, when you're thinking about our potato patch, when we grew a potato patch, it was over a thousand acres of just potatoes. Wow. You know, we, we grew 3000 at any given point, there was 3000 acres of alfalfa for feed. We were wow. feeding out 550 head of cattle every six months. Wow. Yeah. That is amazing. The, that Mormon is amazing. Church, the Mormon church had an infrastructure for feeding the masses like I haven't seen before. Uh, now, whenever they, whenever they do raise the food, um, did is that what they then have in their places where like you could go and you could buy yes. their can, you know, you could can your own stuff up? Yeah. Well, you no, you don't buy it. It's it's free. It, it's paid for by the tithing of the church. It's free. What you do is at church, when you're a Mormon, you're, you're at the church. And if you fall on hard times, you'll be approached by the, the clergy of the church and ask if you need help. And if you need help, they'll sit there with a form of everything they've got that they can give. that, you know, everything, everything you can think of that's in a grocery store, they'll fill out the list. And like here in Oklahoma, um, you, the truck comes once a week. You go down there and get your order of food and, and everything, toiletries, everything for a month and bring it home. That's amazing. We didn't my, go my, to the grocery store. The, the church, church fed us for 10 years. Churches really need to take note of that because like Mastos said, said, the, the Jehovah, Jehovah's Witnesses do the same thing. And I think it's really important that all churches um, – work together to be more self-sustainable and to look out for the yeah. people. In I mean, you, you've got to take the good with the bad with organized religion. Let me just put that out there. I'm not, well, I'm yeah. not saying that organized religion is a good thing or, you know, it's, it's not something I follow now, but back then in the, you know, eighties and, and early nineties, the world was a different place. Every had everybody had a different mindset. Everybody wanted to help each other. We're not, they weren't, there was no division like there is today. Um, and yet, it made you want to go to work every day knowing that you were going to feed a lot of people and you were doing good. You were doing good things. You were doing yeah. the things without even knowing you were doing the things. Yeah. You know? Well, I think that a lot like you are, like a lot of organized religion throws in their man made laws instead of just going by the Bible. And then you end up with a, a lot of division and a lot of mess. And that's where a lot of people get turned off from church and God is because people in the church heard us, you know, and yeah, well, and, we're, we're brought up to believe that the church is the, is the place where you find God. And that's, that is not true. You, you no, no, not it. anymore. The church. Is no, the it, you, you've got to have a personal relationship with him and have your own personal faith. If yeah. you don't have deep personal faith, you have really no business trying to go to a church and finding it there. You've got to find it within. Then, then the spirit will tell you where you need to go. If the spirit tells you you need to go visit that church, you'll you'll be there. It, it'll just yeah. happen. It just that's how he works. Yeah, he will. He will lead you. And you, and the way that you know his voice. And then we'll get off the subject of religion because we're not here about <laughs> religion. The way to hear his voice is to talk to him. The more you talk to somebody, the more you know their voice, right? <laughs> right. Um. Oh, hi, I'm or Huga. I'm sorry, CB, for your headache. I, I've been dealing with it. It seems like it gets worse in the evenings. I'm not sure why. 
I think it's these barometric pressure changes and these systems that are coming through, you know, little bits at a time. Woo. Exactly, Farmer Son, you put your faith in God, not people. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's that paint on the safe back there. You should give it to me. That'll take care of your headaches. The what? That safe. Yeah. I hear that. The, I hear the paint on that safe can give you headaches. You should let me take it off your hands. Really? Yeah, hmm. do, do great service for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're so kind. You're so kind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. That was one of our, our best investments. I love it because, you know, I have a son that has drug issues. And um, he also goes through depressive spells. So our, right. our stuff stays in there where we don't have any issues with access to that. Um, my husband and I are the only ones that have that code. And, um, you know, it, it, it's nice to have it, not have to worry about anything being stolen either. So it's one of my favorite preps. Love it. Love it. And we got it on sale with some income tax money one year. We decided we was going to invest in that. Okay. So what did you learn from, from, um, farming on that large of a scale? Like what did you, is there any tips or tricks or anything, any advice you can give us? Well, <clears throat> When you're on a, such a large scale, and you got to remember, this was back before everybody was freaked out about chemicals and products and your stuff. There wasn't a farm in this country in the 70s and 80s that did not use pesticides. There was no organic farming. Yeah. And 90% of the, the, the pesticides are not added on plants. I learned that's the biggest thing. You can call a plant organic because you don't spray the plant, but you spray the ground before you plant it. And then after the harvest, it's sprayed. So therefore, the plant growing, the, the fruit on the plant is organic. It was growing. It was organically grown. And they, they use the play on words now today in today's society. It's all just a play on words because there's no way a multi-million dollar farm operation will harvest all of their wheat and put it in a silo without pesticides. There's just they won't do it. It might be an organic one or something like that, but that's just, that's a bought and paid for moniker, you know? So everybody thinks the whole organic kick is great and all that. But if you, unless you're doing it yourself and know what you're putting in it, the organic label is very, it's misinformation. Well, one of the things that, that I, I try not to use like pesticides and things, but like when there's a pest, it's completely eradicating your crop like if it's survival you're gonna do what you have to do um yeah but but i have a lot of options hey monty good to see you I have a lot of options available you know if you want to do the organic first by all means do the organic first and well, then and then but if if that's not working you do what you got to do to feed your family um like I right now, we have so many options. We still can go to the store if something fails. Mm -hmm. But if this mattered, if this far, if this today's harvest mattered for me, I would be in trouble because <clears throat> you know stuff has failed. But with everything that's happened to me in the last eighteen months, to me getting a tomato plant to grow a piece a tomato from where I was eight months ago with my wife's issues. It, it, it was a miracle I even got that. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, everything can change on a dime. Yeah, <clears throat> <that's> what, <clears throat> excuse me. That's what I wanted to talk about is that I went in, you know, gearing up for this season. Everybody was happy, healthy, and fine. Right. My wife. And then next thing you know, um, a stroke, a heart attack, breast cancer, all within 18 months. So everything that I had planned out, because I plan out 18 to two years ahead of time, is was out the window. I mean, it was completely gone. I did what I could. You know, I started all my plans thinking everything's going to be okay. You know, Leah's going to be fine. And then the second stroke happened. And it was like, you know, I just, there was, it was come down to the decision of taking care of what I needed to take care of, which was changing jobs um, and neglecting stuff that I just, felt was not necessary and not productive in what I needed to do to take care of Leah. So I, I kind of lost the whole year because of that, but I did 
have some success. I grew some pretty large yellow tomatoes. Mm-hmm. I, I grew a lot of greens. I did some carrots. I, 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 my garden, for the most part, although very limited, I still did it, and I still got stuff growing, and I might do some fall stuff, but life happens, and you've got you've to gotta prepare for, for that, but when it all happens like it happened to me, how do you prepare for that? That's why you prepare. Is so I could rely on the stuff I already had, yeah. and it was okay that my garden fell, failed, uh, not miserably, but it failed. It was a failure because I neglected it because I had to take care of the things. But that's why we prep because we right. have we had everything we needed and it was okay. Yeah. And that's the importance of getting a two year pantry. You have a two year yeah. pantry. Mine's not there right now because I've used a lot of it. It's not there. I need to fill some gaps. I'll admit that. Mm-hmm. Everybody who doesn't admit that is just playing games. Yeah. But there's issues I got to fill, and but that's why we have it. Is mm-hmm. you know I had to miss work, and you know I switched jobs, and I lost out a whole month's pay because I switched jobs in the pay periods. And but now we're getting ahead of it, and maybe put some stuff in for fall and see if I can get some green beans and peas out of it. Yeah. Well, hey, Drops, good to see you. Yeah, I think that um, I think that the majority of, of us, even though we prepared, okay, even though we prepared, our, our pantries are lower than they used to be. Mm-hmm. Even though I've been preparing for years, I'm having to build back up because, you know, there were limitations on a lot of things. And, like, when I go to the store, I go once a month. And I buy for the entire month. And I'm finding that, you know, back, back then I, I couldn't, there was, st- there's still some things that are limited here. And so whenever I would try to restock, we were using more than I was able to restock. So I'm grateful that I had that because it got us through and I was able to help my family out and they needed it as well. My adult children and stuff during that time. But I can't imagine, you know, like going through what you went through and, you know, that's why we prep because like, what if it was the main provider of the house? What if, like, what if that happened with my husband? He's the main provider. I, yeah. I'm physically unable to work outside the home. Yeah, um, and, and the thing is, is a lot of people got to admit, they don't want to admit to themselves, they're preppers, yes, and being a prepper school. But I don't know too many preppers that prep for a lifetime. You Right. I mean, I, I try to prep to fill gaps while – You know, because if a situation happens, I'm not going to be working anymore. I'm going to be dedicating to the homestead. And when I can spend 60 hours a week at my homestead instead of making somebody else money in the real world, then things will be a lot different. You see what I'm saying? Even if something happens to somebody here, which, and uh, you know, people have to admit realities. A situation where we go grid down or, or SHTF, if, Everything changes. Right. My wife has three months to live, period. Okay. Not many people in this chat, I can guarantee you, have said goodbye to your wife already. Yeah. Even though she's laying right next to me. Yeah. Okay. I've done that. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's reality. Yeah. But if you don't prep your mind for what could happen yeah. and be ready for it and accept it now, you're not going to make it when it, when it counts. Yeah, absolutely. And I know that, um, like you're, uh, you're completely right. I mean, but that's what you're going for. And most people don't prep for a lifetime, but that's what where the trying to do the homesteading and be self-sustainable as best as you can comes in. But there's some things that are never going to grow in our area that are going to grow in other areas and vice versa. You know, there's right. certain, like like I'm probably gonna have to get used to the fact that I'm never gonna have any coffee again should there be SHTF like major SHTF or Tiatwaki situation I'm not gonna have coffee again <laughs> I, I, once right. my trips run out I'm, I'm but, done you know but here's the thing here's how I look at a situation like that is that I'll grow tomatoes and the money that I save from not having to go to the store and buy tomatoes I'll just buy coffee and put it away I could probably 
I could store 10 years worth of coffee if I had to, because coffee's going to, you know, it's going to keep sanity. Right. <laughs> it's going to keep other people around me alive is what it's going to do for yeah, me. Yeah. I was yeah. I, I knew what I knew what I was saying. <laughs> I was just being nice. <laughs> oh my gosh. No kidding. But eventually that runs out. I mean, like if there's a situation where things don't go back to normal and ever again, you know, there you go. So, um, yeah, there's going to be things that we're not going to have access to. So we need to figure out alternatives that we can have right. for our area that we can grow and, and things. Yeah, I've been trying the last few years to try to take a big ag model and condense mm -hmm. it down to a homestead. It's difficult to do because big ag grows things in many different ways. Their seeds mm -hmm. are different. They're not, you know, publicly traded seeds, I guess you could say. They are, but they're not normal seeds. <clears throat> when you plant tomatoes in a, a big agricultural environment, you don't, they're not out there with stakes and cages and all that. They plant a thousand acre field full of tomatoes, Romas mainly, and let it grow. But these plants are the GMO plants. They all no. grow the same rate. They all fruit the same time. They all turn ripe at the same time. It's very weird. But when you see a field do it, I've seen it a million times. <clears throat> it's the strangest thing you've ever seen. Everything turns ripe at once. So you can just run the harvester down and, and, and you're done. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean some, some big, large greenhouse operations do it a little differently. But I mean, that's a greenhouse operation. Right, right. Speaking of greenhouses, there are a lot of greenhouses that grow medicinal plants, we'll say, for and and if they do grow them in the basically in the potting soil bags like bundles and they grow their plants in there, a lot of them will just discard those after they've grown the plants in there. So check with any grow houses that are around your area if it's grown around your area and see if they do that. And if they do, if they don't recycle their soil, that would be some great soil to have for your gardening and things. Um, unfortunately, the one that's closest to us does not do that. And a couple of the others have been shut down because they did not get all the permitting that they needed or they exceeded what their permitting allowed. Yeah, but, I mean everywhere you look out here they're popping up everywhere. Yeah, they're everywhere everywhere but it, it'll yeah. calm down within a year i mean yeah. i know I'm, i just look forward a year i know you guys don't like to do that but yes i look forward i i, I set a goal for a year from now what, what is he doing <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's really funny because we have a neighbors and whenever I put something up, like whenever I can something or make jelly or whatever I've done this year, I'll take one over. They're our friends. They're real close friends of ours. And I'll take them over. They're like my guinea pigs. And I'll take it over there and they'll they'll be like, well, this fall we need to come. You know, her husband is like more excited about my garden than my husband is. And he's like, this fall, we need to get out there. Joe and I need to get out there. We need to do this. We need to do that in your garden and, you know, get it all prepped up and good to go for the next year. <laughs> and I love it. I love seeing that enthusiasm and, like, the joy whenever I take something like that over to their house and share it. And and they're like, oh, I get to try something new. What were you up to this week? And, and it's, the best, like it. it's the best way to introduce somebody to prepping. I mean, yeah. really. Yeah, it, it's a well, conversation that, starter. But it's renewing and rejuvenating something that that our grandparents and great grandparents did, and it was just their way of life. And I love the fact that, like, I have uh, my husband's grandmother some of her canning supplies. I have her canning jars. I still check them and make sure they're safe to use and everything. But so far, they've all been pretty awesome. Oh, gosh, I wish I was a garden queen gear. <laughs> but, I mean, it's been pretty awesome to be able to use things that she used and touched. And, and like, her, her like, grinder thing that has the little wooden dowel that comes to a point And then it has, you know, it meshes. It has the mesh, the metal mesh cone that you can grind a, a food meal. That's what it is. I have that of hers. You know, things like that. I mean, it's just, I love it. I love it. Yeah. Hey, like, like, uh, 
Huga just said um, in the chat, I think it was her. I, I'm not watching chat really. Uh, we were, it's in our, it's in, it's built into our, you know, innate nature to make life. Yeah. We're not, a, we're not people that bring death and destruction. We're bringers of life. That's what we were put on this planet for. It's written in yeah. the word. Yeah. It's what we're supposed to do, whether yeah. it be, everybody can say it's just to make children, but set forth and procreate is set forth and procreate everything you need to survive. That's plants, animals, uh, everything. It's yeah. everything. It's the whole picture. Mm -hmm. And, uh, when you look at it, like the whole picture, like bringing life is, is an amazing thing. And that's what, that's why farmers and gardeners and everybody that has a garden and spends a lot of time out in it. There seem to be a little bit calmer people. I mean, they, <laughs> I guess, cause they're just in nature all the time when you're in touch with it and you, it, it becomes a part of your DNA, I guess you could say. I don't know what else to call it. It just becomes second nature. You're, everything will, you'll get the, in, the intuitions like, hey, you need to be planting now or, or plant later or do this now. It just becomes yeah. second nature. Yeah. And that's why I, I, it was so hard for me to say, to, to start a channel. And like I could, I didn't think I knew anything else more than any other person did. It's just second nature to me. So it was not something I felt that I was going to be able to teach people or, or benefit somebody by watching videos of mine. But I've learned that I was wrong in that aspect. I, people, people like it. And I guess I have something to teach somebody. Yeah, you do. You have a lot to teach. I mean, I, I'm just amazed at what all you, you accomplish and, and how, how you every, have everything that you accomplish going. Oh, at when it, yeah, mine is not on. perfect by any means. I mean, I've got, I've <clears> got <throat> way bigger dreams of what, of what I want my homestead to look like. It's just not there, but you can't let everything that you really want to see stop you from getting what you need. Right. So just do it. Right. And then, you know, like I didn't have infrastructure for goats when I bought my goat, but the goat was there and something told me like that, that what I was just telling you about, like, don't leave this parking lot without that goat. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to do that. I bought the goat, <laughs> come home. And I was like, what are we going to do with this goat? <laughs> <laughs> I had time cause I had to bottle raise it, but yeah, I mean, did some research and found out it'd be fine. Just running around with my chickens. I don't know if he thinks he's a chicken or some of my chickens now think they're goats, but they, they, they seem to get along. Probably a little bit of both. Probably right. I'm pretty sure I've seen a goose headbutt somebody now, so I got to watch him. <laughs> them geese. <clears throat> well, your rooster thinks he's an attack dog, so. <laughs> yeah. That, that rooster's got, that rooster's going to have his one bad day this weekend. <laughs> Sorry, my dog's scratching. Quit. What? Um, Have you yeah. noticed any uh, more issues with fleas just here on your dogs? Um, I had noticed more issues with fleas, but they ended up getting a sarcoptic mite, like a mange mite, um, from because we have coyotes that run around out here, and yeah. this is the second time they've gotten it. But uh, so we we treated them and everything, so it should be starting to clear yeah, up. My dog, my dog got something, and <clears throat> we treated him for fleas. He's getting better. I don't know if I didn't see too many fleas. We've seen a few, but not for what he was going through. Uh, he's doing better now, but. Mm. Yeah. Like with, the, with my dogs, with their sarcoptic mites, uh, this time it started on their elbows, like kind of like hot spots on their, like what would be considered their elbows. And then um, they, um, it was like a dry scaly patch that seemed real itchy. Like she scratched it until it just bled because it just drove her nuts. And then, um, yeah, DE bath. Um, and then. Thank uh, you, Sandra. Hey, sis. Good to see you. Hey, fishes. Sorry. Hey, drop. Now you're okay. Thanks, Sandra, for dropping that. <clears throat> yeah. Can I, can I touch on that really quick? Yeah. The give, my giveaway video Friday. Yes, go for yeah, it. You guys can enter up until I, I'm going to do the drawing uh, Friday sometime. And so I'll cut off the comments at like midnight, Thursday night. And just I, I put a video up. Sandra put the link there. Um, I'm giving away uh, the Dave Canterbury box set of Bushcraft books, which I just happen to have a set sitting here. <laughs> 
guys. Well, I'm so it. excited. Got them all in there. I'm hoping I win. I'm crossing my fingers and my toes and right, my everybody, legs. Everybody, get in on it. And then uh, <clears throat> I'm really going to try to work on doing more videos. I really am. I I got a I got self I got issues I need to work on, which is me wanting to film myself and talk to a camera, my phone while I'm gardening. It it really it distracts me from what I think gardening should be. But I know right. I want to do it. I just I can't. <laughs> it just drives me nuts. Yeah, that. Like you said before, the trick is you don't just let that paralyze you to where you're not doing something. You're right. Yeah, you know? we all got and our own advice. Like, for sure. like, you know, I, I decided, okay, I'm going to try a different area. I want to do a gardening spot. I tried once, but it was mainly container gardening. But it was more up here near the house. I decided to put it down there. And my husband uh, plowed up... Uh, a plot and it happened to have different soil than a lot of the other area on our on our land so i was grateful for that because it seemed to do a lot better and then um you know i didn't plant a whole lot this year because i wasn't sure with my health issues if i'd be able to handle it heat is really difficult on me um so but i got out there and yeah i didn't have a lot of variety out there i mean it's just mainly some peppers, some okra, some tomatoes, and well, I did zucchini. When you, when you live in a climate such as yours, your microclimate is dictating what you can plant. You know right. what you can grow. We talked about this a little while. We talked about this backstage. You know what you can grow. So right. don't grow stuff that you know that ain't going to work. Just lay everything thick with what you can grow because you can eat it. It's all going to eat the same. Yeah. It's all going to have the same vitamins. Yeah. Yeah. Lay it thick and, and you know, stock it deep. Thanks. Thanks, Gear. Thank you, Mr. I appreciate it. I, I I did. I enjoyed it. And like, I can't remember who it was that said that. I think it might have been Gil or SOP. I'm not sure. But there is a sense of pride whenever you grow your own food. And there's, and you, you appreciate that food more whenever you're growing it, whether you're raising the animal and, and dispatching of it yourself, or whether you're collecting the eggs from your own chickens that you care for or harvesting your own fruits, fruits or vegetables, it really does. Um, it's yeah. Just, you seem more blessed and you appreciate it more and you don't waste and, it. And you, and you know somebody out there saying, thinking to themselves right now, he's talking about bringing life, but yet he's, you know, harvesting animals for food. Mm -hmm. I understand that point. But if you can, how deep do you want to look at it? Do you want to look at it as when you take a tomato, you're killing the tomato too? You're stopping the seeds from procreating? Or, or are you taking like a chicken? I mean, it's, it's, it sucks. I hate doing it. It's one of the hardest things I have to do. I hate it. I just hate it. But the end result is better, more beneficial to me and my family because I know what yeah. went into it. It's, it's, yeah. I try to give my, like, my farm animals one bad day. I mean, they're going to have one bad day their whole life. The rest of their life, they're going to live the best life they can live. Yeah. And and, and you're, you're going to do it in as humane of a way as possible, too. Um, oh, yes. I, I consider my cows out here to be much better off than just being fattened up in a feed yard, like stuck in a small cage where they can't move around at all. And they're, they're like laying down in their own feces and they're, you know, they're just miserable and cramped and, and stuff. I, I, my cow, our cows out here, they're grass fed. They're well taken care of. They get their minerals. They get their grass. They get, you know, whatever they need out here. Um, they're right. well looked after and they're, they're, they've got plenty of room to graze and enjoy. So, um, I'm just happy to have them out here. And I feel like, you know, for me personally, I feel like God brought them to us for food. And um, as long as we're humanely dispatching them and caring for them humanely, then I think that's the most. It, it, it's all part of it. Yeah. And if you don't get over that hump and do it now, when it matters, you, you got to know you can do it. Some people yeah. can't do it. Some people yeah. can't. And that's okay. You don't have to. Yeah. But if if you're going to live in a community that it, where it's, it's going to happen a lot, you've got to at least be used to, 
to the idea yeah. of that's where, where my food well, could come from one day. Yeah, I mean, if if somebody's going to eat the meat, then they they need to understand. Right, where you've got to give, you've got to pray about it too, and give thanks. Oh and, yeah. Uh, and and give offerings and stuff like that, and and do it respectful. The main thing is yeah. respecting it. You've yeah. got to respect the animal all the way through. I mean, yeah, and if you're taking joy in doing something like that, dispatching an animal, then you know you maybe right. need to do some soul searching because it's not something that anybody's going to be joyful about. They're going to be joyful that they're going to have food in their in their freezer or being able to can it or whatever. But um, you know, that's not something that somebody's saying, "Oh, goody, I get to." Dispatch a bunch of animals today, you know. Um, right. It's not, it's not something I'm, I enjoy. Exactly, Morgan. Whenever I'm out at um, out at the garden, I thank the Lord. I'm like, thank you, God, yeah. for all you provided, whether it's a little bit or a lot. I'm just thankful to have it, you know. Right. And uh, it means the world to be able to um, save my family that much money and to have food put back for our security, for our food security. Um, and if that food's there, if we come on hard times and we're limited on finances, we've got food, the money can go to medication or whatever it is that we're needing, you know? Um, right. so it all balances out whenever you do that, no matter what you do, whether you stick with just animals or gardening or you do a combination of both. Hey, Cadwin, good to see you. Yeah, it's... It's it's a good feeling though. I can imagine you right. really, really. Ima I I mean, it, I'm, it, 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 it strikes a chord deep in your deep in your inner being that that is something you're supposed to be doing naturally. You're supposed to be doing that. You're supposed to be doing what you can to to bring life and and bring joy, and and that's the best way to do it. Yeah. Knowing that yeah. you did that, knowing that you. <clears throat> Created something from basically nothing, a seed and dirt. Yeah. It's a, it's a good feeling. It's a great feeling. Everybody gets it. Yeah. Everybody has it. Yeah. Some of us just not very good at putting it on YouTube. Yeah. And that's okay. People don't have to. Um, but it's fun to see how everybody does things differently and to learn from each other. And, you know, I've said this before, but I'll say it again. Everybody has something to teach and something to learn. And so, there's no one person out there that knows everything. No, uh, of course not. Something more learn that they can day. learn. Yep. Yeah. There's there's a lot of there there's techniques I still try every year that I've never done before. That's the part of it. It's like maybe it'll work, yeah. maybe it won't. But if you don't know, and then, you, you know, you just and then if you relocate, it's like starting over because the soil yeah. is different, the environment's different, like the weather, all of it, the humidity, it all plays a factor and a role in it. You know, I remember whenever right. my right. husband and I, when our son was little, we lived up in Kansas for a short period of time. We lived out on a farm. The The ground was nearly black. It was so rich. The soil was so rich. It was just like you took a bunch of deep, dark, potting soil and just poured it all out in the field. It was beautiful. Anything and everything grew out there. We didn't have too much problem with any kind of pests or anything. Um, the temperature was hot, but it was in a little bit of a valley, so it it was a little cooler right there than it would have been if we were up higher. So it worked out perfect. But here, completely different. You know, I mean, yeah, it's a whole different ball game. <laughs> it's different, but it as long as you know how to get it to where you were, you're fine. And it's not something you can do overnight. It conditioning soil takes years, and that's that's part of the relocating is something you've got to be able to, you got to know what your dirt right. needs. I mean, now we have the luxury of sending out a soil sample and getting back the results of what we need to put in there and we can amend the, the ground. And I'm right. I'm a believer in amendments. I'm not, I'm not the 100% organic gardener type guy. I'm realist. I garden and I, I do what needs to do to get the fruit in the, on my table. And there's things mm -hmm. I do and there's things I won't do. You know, yeah. there's a time I will use insecticides and there's a time I won't use insecticides. Right. I mean, it's all you're you just got to know. And that's what I'm trying to tell people. Like you, there's a million different ways to get the same result. Yeah. So you've got to take a few of those million things 
and find out what works in your backyard. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Because I know there's the zones and you got the zones and all that, but there's microclimates in every zone that mm -hmm. would blow your mind. It would, it would, it would astonish you because me and Tasha are probably technically in the same zone. Yet we're different. We're way different on the whole mm -hmm. temperatures and water and she yeah. gets way less water than me, but we're in the same zone. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is crazy. And uh, Drops made a good point. The best thing to do if you're moving into a new area is to ask the locals what they grow and why, like what works best for their soil area. Yeah. Um, the best thing to do is go to your local farmer's market. They'll yeah. gladly tell you. Mm hmm. That is true, too. That is true, too. And if it's off season and the farmer's market is it open. Like, ask your neighbors and ask right. the, the person, you know, next to you and say, hey, who, who's like rock star gardener around here? I want to go talk to them. I need to find out what is going to be the best to grow here. Right. What and here's, here's the advantage to the homestead is what, why, why we're talking about the soil thing. It goes hand to hand with that as well. I make my own compost now with all of my chickens and rabbits and everything like that. Right. So even if I've got bad dirt, if I lay my compost, which I know I can make and I've done it, I'll do it on top of that ground. I know I can grow because I know my, all my stuff is already grown in it. So, uh Oh, what? Oh, I froze. Oh, so that gives well. you an advantage. If you're, if you can find a way to make your own compost, you don't even need animals to do it. Get a little composting barrel. They sell them on Amazon and use it. And if you can create your own soil, which your plants thrive in, it don't matter really so much what's underneath because the soil that you put on top will leach down and take care of, and turn that soil underneath into what you have. And it will build your soil. It takes years. It doesn't, it doesn't happen overnight, but if you can still make your own compost and everything like that, you could literally throw a car, piece of cardboard down, throw your compost on it and grow a tomato plant. Yeah. Hey, Angela, good to see you. Good to see you. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited about next year. Already thinking about what I want to put out there and <laughs> right. I know, you know, it's like addicting in a way because to me, it's like a it sure every time I go out there. <laughs> it, like, Cause right now is the best time to look at the mistakes you made because you learn more out of mistakes than successes. So I've taken right. everything that I've learned and realize, and then that will determine where I'm going to put everything next year because right. certain things got to be rotated. You can't, you know, if you amend the soil, right, you can grow year after year, but it's better to rotate around. That's where the right. big agriculture, agriculture comes in. You never grow the same crop, you know, two or three years in a row. Right. You rotate it out. And that's one of the things I've been trying to do. It's a little bit harder on a micro scale with the, you know, everything being so close together, but I'm working it out. Am I frozen on your end? Cause I'm frozen nope. on my end. Nope. You're good. You're good. You can refresh if you want. Okay. Re refresh and I'll be right here. Now you're sideways. <laughs> um, Oh, yes. The Green Wizards Guide. SOP put this up. Um, the Green Wizards Guide. Uh, it, he put the link for Amazon in there. That is an excellent resource. I've seen him I've interview. You. you do? Yeah. And so I do need to get that. Um, I think that'd be pretty cool um, to have that because he sure seems to know what he's talking about. Yeah. It, the book's a different read. You got to it's a it's gardening based on a story of of relocation so it's it'll it'll really it really help in that aspect but he knows what yeah. he's talking about yeah yeah sorry i'm trying to catch up on the side chat yeah, I'm sorry trying to... if anybody has any questions hey, if anybody hey, has any questions for josh on gardening or Anything like that, I'm sure he'd be happy to answer if he knows the answer. <laughs> and that he probably will. But, uh, but yeah. Joe wants to know how you amend for calcium, please. I dry, I dry my eggshells in uh, 
crush them up in a, a spice grinder and then put them in the soil. Okay. And what if uh, you don't have access to those, then what would you do? Uh, go to the lake and pick up seashells, mm -hmm. um, oyster shells, save all your, uh, your, your, any, any shellfish, save all the shells. Okay. I mean, but, I mean, eggs are the best. Okay. The easiest to get a hold of. And Mouse Post has another question. When is Epsom salt needed? When your peppers are kicking your ass, Mouse, that's when you put Epsom salts on them. <laughs> <laughs> when your peppers are kicking your butt, what do you mean? <laughs> like, when my peppers are, look like they're stunted and, you know, they're, mm -hmm. they're a little bit yellowing. You can just tell they need something. You you try and you've tried the whole, you know, basic fertilizer that didn't work. That's when I go to the Epsom salts. Okay. I, I still need to do it. That people have really told me about this Epsom salt here thing lately. Because you know you don't do that on a large scale. I like you, you know you can't go buy five hundred tons of Epsom salt and put it out, put it out there. So I've never done it. So yeah. it's something new that I've tried and um, it, it seems to work. But I mean, people have been doing it a lot longer than I have. Yeah. You know, that's one thing I did do. I didn't do a whole lot to my garden because, you know, you asked me about this. But um, I ba we basically tilled the soil. We, we amended with a little bit of peat moss and a little bit of, um, well, it was basically peat moss and a little bit of soil that had some cow manure in it. Just a little bit and it had been there for a long time. So it wasn't hot anymore. And we, we tilled that in there, and then I, I dug my ditches for, like, my peppers and okra and stuff, and uh, I put a little bit of potting soil in there, and I put a little bit of more peat moss in there, and then I put, uh, after I planted everything, I sprinkled some Epsom salt around my plants. That was all I did. <laughs> and, then, and then I did feed them with some shaken feed, some um uh, miracle mouse, growth. mouse, you got to let me answer one question before you start asking another one. Depending Golly. on the size, depending on the size of the seedling mouse, or I mean, I plant to the, I usually pull off the first two uh, grow leaves and then plant all the way to the base of the first two branches on my tomato seedlings. And as for your next question, yes, I do have a, a pallet compost out in the middle of the chickens, and I add all the chicken stuff from it, all the rabbit stuff from it, and. Uh, all the hay and everything that I don't use. And I, I, yes, I make my own compost. Yeah. If I, if I lived near a lake, uh, fishes, I would be doing that too. The native Americans did used to put, uh, fish in, uh, in the bottom of their holes whenever they were planting their corn and other things. So sure did. Oh yeah. Mouse is also on tramadol. So because of her dental surgery. So yeah, she's feeling pretty good right now. So she's all skunky with questions. <laughs> Mouse is grilling me. Mouse, you're supposed to be on my side here. What are you doing? Okay. What are some of the biggest going. gardening mistakes that you've made? Like, like, is there anything that was like just a complete and total flop fail? We'll never do that again. Yeah. Uh, I didn't rotate my chickens out soon enough oh, and it over nitrogen over nitrogenated part of my garden. And, uh, I, I left the, the chickens in there too long, you know, because shit I was happening everywhere. And I just, I, I, the chickens were fine. They were okay. And so I just let them graze in my garden for too long. I should have took them out a month ahead of when I did. And yeah, that was a big mistake this year. Uh, a fish is in love's life says hi, Leah. <laughs> and another big mistake was uh, thinking I could garden with my grandson and take my eye off of him for two seconds with all the seedlings in the greenhouse. I ended up with the tags all ripped out and he was playing with all the tags in the dirt. I'm like, D I, okay. <laughs> so I didn't know if I was growing pumpkins on my fence. I didn't know where I planted what tomatoes, but you know, it worked oh. out. <laughs> it's a learning experience, isn't it? Okay. Like, oh. I better look at chat again. Mouse has probably asked three questions. She probably has. <laughs> Mouse is awesome. Hey, Dave. <clears throat> oh, my goodness.
fishes yes um i used to take it too it got to where it didn't work for me the trim at all so i had to quit it for a while i may have to go back on it though I'm, i just got to be careful with it because it's part it can yeah that's your what heart. they call it mouse is burning it 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 basically it makes it just too hot i don't know they, they call it burn but they, it's like it's turning yellow like it's out been out no water and you're watering it. You're doing everything you're thinking, but it looks like it's being dried up by the sun. And it just, there's nothing you can do about it. Suburban, I missed it. Sorry. My eyes, I need to go get new glasses. And I am, what state and growing zone is he in? Like you said, it's different everywhere. I'm on the cleft of zone six and seven. Depends on what seed packet you look at. Yeah. <laughs> And he's in Oklahoma, northeastern Oklahoma. Yeah, I'm in northeast Oklahoma. I'm around the Tulsa area. That's yeah. the nearest city to me. I mean, good luck. Yeah. Sorry about that, Hillbilly. My, my eyes have a hard time focusing, so sometimes I see it and sometimes I don't. Um, but sometimes I also think the whole growth zone map needs to be changed because the, it's getting so hot here in the summers now. I mean, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. And then over in the eastern part, you guys get, I think, more humidity than we get here. Like, it yeah. gets humid here sometimes, but y'all get more humidity because there's a lot more trees and things right. like yeah, that in that area. That moisture, the, the moisture that comes out of the Gulf, there's a dividing line right in the middle of Oklahoma, and you're on the other yeah. side of it. Yeah. I mean, you get it humid, but, I mean, right now it's probably 85 outside with, 70% humidity? Yeah, see here, it's only, like I can tell you right now, it's, uh, I'm in far, far western Oklahoma, almost to the Texas panhandle, um, um, north of I-40, so that gives you an idea, and it's 38% humidity at 91 degrees, so it's 91 degrees, but it's 38% humidity. Yeah, that's, it, you're about the same as us, but we're a little... It, it just, you get a little bit warmer than us, I think, but it's a little bit drier. You, Mouse Toes says if, if, if she were to ask a, a question, it would be, does he get the wind I get in my area? But I'm not axing really. She's talking about, do you get the wind that we get here in Western Oklahoma? Oh, like, yeah. We get, we get oh, yeah. It's windy. Really it's, it, it gets a bit breezy out here. I had. La two years ago, I seen two tornadoes within a half mile of my house. Yeah, it gets a little bit breezy. Yeah, but like sustained winds, like straight winds or wind gusts, uh, not related to tornadoes. Like we, like no, here. Yeah, it's, it's not here. like out where you're at. We right. we get the occasional, you know, winds windy days that last well, for a week. You also have trees as a wind blockage barrier type thing, whereas here in Western yeah. Oklahoma, it's more like. There's not much in the way of trees. Yeah. When they were talking about the wind sweeping down the plains, they weren't talking about where I live. They're talking about where you live. <laughs> yeah. Like, like it's nothing for us to get. I mean, an average of 25 to 30 mile per hour sustained winds here um, often. And then we get gusts of up and sometimes sustained winds of up to 65 and 70 miles per hour. Um, although that's, that's more rare, but the gas we get to frequently to 45 miles per hour. Um, so as you can tell, you can understand why the dust bowl was such a big deal back in the day. <laughs> right. Well, the, du the dust bowl happened due to the fact that they removed all of the trees and they, they turned everything into farmland. And when they and turned they, everything they, into farmland, yep. there was nothing to stop the erosion from the wind. Yep. Yeah, that's why we don't have topsoil hardly at all here. Yeah, in West it's Florida. it's all down in Texas. Yeah, yeah, it, it's all bye bye. It went adios a long time ago. Oh, is Kaylin? Did Kaylin sneak in here? I missed her. Kaylin, hey, if you're hey, hey, that's a great question. I have one compost pile that I use for all of my chicken scraps and and all of that stuff that's sequestered that I don't want them to mess with a lot. But a lot of the times I, I have a secluded area in the run of my chickens that I will basically do a deep bedding system. And I put chips down and then it turns to dirt and I put more chips down. 
So when I need my garden, I'll take and I'll take my tiller over to where the chickens are. And they love it when I do this. I, I have a video of it. You go over there and I'll till up, you know, a 10 or 15 or 20 foot patch. And I'll remove that soil and use that as a, 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 like an amendment to the soil. You don't use a lot. You spread it like you would anything else. But like I did, a, we did an experiment in three raised beds. The tomato plants that you guys seen with the giant yellow tomatoes. Uh -huh. that, was a, that was me and uh, my buddy decided that we were going to do a heavy egg load shell or, or mm -hmm. heavy egg shell load. And then we're, we literally dumped probably a week's worth of rabbit manure in each bed and then topped it off with chicken manure last October. And we just let uh -huh. it sit. Uh -huh. We just mixed it up and let it sit from October until I planted it. in. I think it was the beginning of May, late April, the beginning of May. And you've seen what them tomatoes did. So now yeah. I'll take that on a three by three scale and I'll take it and put it in a 50 by 50 plot and see right. if it does the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'll curious probably won't run, I won't run my animals in it near, near as long. Right. Because I'm, if I'm doing it tight knit, like the three by three, the chickens weren't in, were never in that bed. So. Yeah. Now, do you but I've, do anything like a chicken tractor or do you just like have fenced in areas? No, you no. See, I got me and my, my neighbor who's, basically my you know right hand man he helps me with everything uh -huh. i have a lot and he has a lot our two combined lots are less than a half an acre it's about a half acre right and our dividing line between our lots is a fence and the animals are all on that side and it they've got over a quarter of an acre to roam they don't they go to bed when they want and we lock them up when they're done going to bed we don't you know they're they're not caged up or in a run they just they got a yard if they want to leave they can I've never yeah. had a bird fly out of my, my yard Yeah. because I've never clipped their wings because yeah. it goes back to the additive. If you keep them happy and give them stuff to do and keep them entertained in their yard, they have no reason to leave and they don't. Yeah. Yeah. See, I, that would be my other challenge is because of, of my large dogs and they, they haven't been raised around chickens. So like, oh, yeah, my, I had to, I had to divide half of my yard up <clears throat> for my dog run. Yeah. So I'm actually guarding on probably about an eighth of an acre. It's probably what? 60 feet wide by 80 feet long. Okay. And then I've got my 15 raised beds up front and it's not that big. You don't need a lot, a lot of room like everybody thinks you need. You just need to do it right and plan it well. And sorry, Morgan, I missed that question. Um, Mouse Toe said that Morgan asked the question: um, um, If any of you garden or plant by the almanac, she did years ago, and it about killed her trying to keep up. I I go by my the last average frost date from the county from our, the county I live in. You call the, the the regional county, and they'll tell you the average loss l last fraud date frost date for our county. Mm -hmm. And if I got one, if I can find one for my town, which I haven't been able to, I'll just go by county, and I'll go by the last average frost date. And then I usually wait a week because okay. two years ago it got me burned by doing yeah. the whole last frost date. Yeah, yeah, I will because we had a later frost this year here in our area than normal, and so yeah, it really threw us off too. Um, I have, uh, we're at 59 minutes, but if you don't mind staying a minute or two longer, um, where do you get your, your plants or seeds? Well, I've, I got a local farm store here called Atwoods. I buy, I've got yeah. some, uh, in my gardener seeds, uh, they've done really well. Um, like I've got cam up Josh. Uh Oh, we lost him. He'll be back. He probably hit the wrong button. Right. Using the almanac uses gardening by the moon. Yeah. I, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to figuring out what I want to put in the garden for this next year. I don't know that I'm going to do a fall gardening. Um, but 
we'll see. I, I may change my mind, but I, I really need to get it figured out in the next week or two. Hey, Harvey. If y'all are hearing this little noise back here is my dog snoring. Sorry, she goes everywhere with me and she needs a CPAP. <laughs> she needs a CPAP. Oops. Sorry about that. That's wrong okay. Thing. I the wrong See, thing. Burpee. I got burpee yeah. seeds. You know, this is the local Home Depot seeds will work. I got in my gardener. I've got some from uh, Baker Creek, I think. But I mean... I go to Baker Creek and stuff when I can't find them here. And that's the, I had to go to in my garden for the Oriental long yard, long beans. But if like the local farm store, I have don't have it. Then I'll, I'll or off Amazon or wherever. But, uh, and I'm a sucker, man. When they start putting them seedlings out, man, I'm a, I'm a sucker for them. I just can't pass them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is there anything that you prefer to grow? Um, Purchase the plants versus the seeds to start them. Like, is there anything that you like uh, squash and cantaloupes? I don't hardly ever buy starts. Okay. Um, my lettuces never buy starts. The things I like to do to buy a starts are if I try to get a jump on, like I grew purple cabbage this year. I bought those early because they came out early. I grew okay. artichokes this year. I grew artichokes in Oklahoma, but they had them out early and I, I did the math and I was like, I got a, I got a little bit of room and I want to try it. So I threw them in a raised bed and they were early. I had to put uh, row covers on them twice, but they made it. And I got yeah. three little artichokes off of them. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see. Like all my greens and all that I buy, I do seed. I don't do starts, but tomato plants I have, I'm a sucker for tomatoes and peppers. I, I, I just can't yeah. buy them. Yeah. Mouse Joe's asked if anyone canned yard yard long beans this year, and I know Trish, Trish Wiley did. did. She did, and they really love them. Um, and then, yeah, I do believe Cord did use those for dilly beans too. I think yeah. that's all of all of my beans, beans got flooded out. Remember in the spring when I had that big mm -hmm. flood? It yeah, flooded the awesome. entire bean patch. So. Mm. I hate that. Yes, I want to grow yard long beans. She also grew like wax beans and she drew those. What were they? Those dragon tongue beans. beans. Yeah. The dragon tongue Purple beans. Purple hole peas. Yes. Trish was killing it. Trish is killing it this year. Trish yes. needs to put videos out, I'm telling you, because that girl I mean, every day yeah, she's I mean she's like she she's she's, 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 she's not ready for that, but I don't I know. Blame her. She, it's so hard for her to do what she does. I it's amazing what that woman can do. Really, yeah. now that I've gotten to know her on a on a personal level, like I have you, it's amazing. There, it's amazing what people are doing out there that you just don't see on on yeah. YouTube or social yeah. media. There's people yeah. doing the things. It, it, that, she's doing it. She's doing the things. She does like more. like I I don't know how the girl gets it all done with with the chronic pain that she's in all the time and stuff. I don't know how she does it, but she does. She's amazing. Hey, Mary Beth. Well, so yeah, um, she, I she's gonna put I, out a to me and you, by the way, and I hope she does, to next year, preserve something every day for the month of August. She can do it. Woo! She, she can do done it. it. She did it every yeah. day last year. Yeah. Even though she, she came out here to visit me, she, she was still, still doing it here. Yeah. She did it, something every day to, to preserve food. And it, 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 it that was a cool goal, I and she did it. Too. Yeah, that, that is amazing. And I probably food. will have to do that next year. I would really like to change some things up to make my kitchen a little more friendly to being able to do all of that. Because oh, my kitchen, my kitchen is horrible. So it's tiny and it gets hot. Right and yeah. Yeah. She is a machine mouse. She really is. She's amazing. She really is amazing at, at how she's put everything up like she has. Oh, happy wife. I'm really sorry to hear that. Fishes, so fishes. you can raise quail inside. You, they don't have to be outside. I want quail. You, they don't have to be outside. The quail are very quiet. They're not no They're noisy. They're a very great first homestead animal to get because yes. you can grow them very small scale, keep five huh. or six birds in your house. Yeah. You know, and they're not, dirty. They're not that dirty. Oh, Morgan that's says. That's my wife's next animal. The next, I have to buy quail next. Is the only that's the thing, unless I get oh. feeder pigs first. Yeah, I'm Morgan looking at moving. 
I'm looking at moving in October to three acres. And I don't know what I'm going to do with that much land to do what I want. It's going to be like, well, I can, I'm going to have some fun. Morgan says well, instead of making ham and beans, she forgot the timer and now they have ham and bean sludge. Go figure. Oh, no. Well, refried beans, right? Add chicken stock and call it ham soup. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it, it's not a disaster. Just add, add liquid and call it soup. Yeah, we have some quail out here, two drops. Um, they, they're wild, and the, popu the population really got hammered a few years ago. I think three years ago, we got some really large hail, and it decimated the population. So everybody around here is letting the population build back up before they do any. Yeah, I mean, the, the quail oh, you raise at home are a little, little bit different. You, If you want to raise the quail you're talking about, you got to get permits and everything, the bobwhite quail and all that. Yeah. Um, the, the, you you want to get like a Katornix or a Jumbo Pharaoh? That's the big meat bird quails that you want to raise. Bye, Morgan. Thank you for stopping in. All right. Well, thanks, let's Morgan. Here. Um, I know Wide Family Farm is going to be going live here in just a little bit, and so uh, give everybody a chance to go to the bathroom, grab a snacky yeah. snack. Hey, yeah, mm -hmm. I want everybody to come over to the seed swap at Wide Family Farm. We got it. You guys yes. got to come over there. We got to do it. Let's make it good. I mean, Courtney's let's doing great do things it. over there. Yeah, the poop troop rocks, man. <laughs> don't don't knock it till you try it. Come join us and have some have some fun and. And, and experience YouTube for what it's supposed to be like here on Tossa's uh, channel and, and Courtney's channel. Experience YouTube and, for what we're looking for. And will somebody Community, share, happiness, positivity. Love y'all. And will somebody share Gardener Josh's channel link again real quick in the side? Yeah, Sandra's side. been knocking out of the park. Hey, Mouse Toes, great questions. Love you, girl. <laughs> Thank each of you so much for coming in. I love you all so much. I appreciate each and every one of you that have stopped in, whether it was for a minute or two or for the entire time. Josh, thank you so much for being our guest we today. We've got to do this more often. I want to do it more often. I, it, it's the only way. If I do more of this stuff, maybe I'll do some more videos. i got I got to find right. you. You've got to. You've got to. I want to learn. I'm a, I'm a sponge that needs to absorb information. Okay, so... You've got to. You got to give me tips and tricks. All right. Tricks. Yeah. I want it we'll to be successful. Out. All right. Well, thank you all Love so much. Love y'all. God bless. And remember, guys, to prep for it. Prep for it all. Bye, guys.